You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving the financial goals of every customer, one interaction at a time. So whether you're dreaming of a new house, buying a boat, or sending your children off to college, First Lockhart National Bank will be there every step of the way with financial services and guidance you can trust. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. All right, we're here at Weiss High School here in Pflugerville, Texas. And, and I hope you can hear me because I have a feeling I'm going to already be told that the, the hot spot has gone out again as I can see uh, Merle typing already. Um, we are, our hotspot is not working in this gym. It didn't work in this gym last time. Um, I'm waiting to see what Merle's got to say about the, the show itself. Let's see, cutting in and out. Okay, so again, I'm hoping you can hear us. We're here for the first time in 20 years that the Lockhart Lions are in the playoffs and they're going up against a pretty darn good Weiss Wolves team. But the good news is the Lions beat the Weiss Wolves at home by, I believe, four the first time they played them. And so we're here with Lockhart's head coach, Javier Torres. And, mm -hmm. Sir, first time, what, what's, this, what's this mean to you guys? Well, it's, 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 it's a lot of wait time right now, you know what I mean? In, in between games and stuff, so these guys aren't used to it. So we're just trying to keep them on schedule and stuff. Um, you know, we try to do everything the same before the game. So, And it's going good. And they're focused, and we had a good shoot around this morning. And we fed them lunch, and you know what I mean? I mean, they're, they're locked in, ready to go. Well, that's good. And so, you know, you, you aren't... 11 and 10. You aren't senior laden. So talk about each of your seniors and what what they mean to this oh, program well, i mean you. that's this is, that's where it all starts you know it starts with tyler tyler just sets the tone for us off the court in the classroom and and in the weight room it, it, it you just, it can't get no better than that and that i told him right before the game that you deserve this this is what you deserve you've worked for this and and then you go to geo geo put him to work this summer to get himself in shape get that shot better and um and then you got like Jordan Garcia, you know, brings toughness to us off the football field and can handle the ball, you know. And um, then we got Bronson. Bronson got a nice little, nice little jumper, you know. He, you know, he fell with some issues there, but with some great issues. But he's back to us. And um, then you have uh, Miguel Rodriguez. <laughs> it's just that kid right there. When he gets confidence, he's the best shooter in the district, in my opinion. So those. Those guys right there that brought a lot of um, a lot of consistency to the program, and it, it's great to see that. You know, I, I, we're going to miss them. I tell you that, but it, it ain't over yet. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It is not. So, McCallum, who you guys split with in the regular season, yes, they came in here and they put the handles on Maynard, mm -hmm. and wasn't Maynard like the number one seed? They were. They were number three. They were number they're three. Number, they're, um, they're, they're, these guys that we're playing are number two, and um, Henderson won their district number one. So, gotcha. Yeah, so, yeah, Maynard played well. I mean, um, uh, McCallum played well. They played well, um, made free throws towards the end in that stretch, and um, that's how you win games. And they didn't turn the ball over a lot, and uh, they handled that pressure. If you can handle that pressure, you you got a good chance of winning against, you know, teams like that. Right. Mm, so. Well, and I talked to the Wade boys because I love the Wade yeah. boys over yeah. there, and 
you know, they were excited. They're they're hoping that maybe you guys can match up horns sometime later in the line. Yeah. And and I said, if we keep playing the way we've been playing, there's a very good chance of that. That's so. the third round right there. Me and Puentes talked about that the <laughs> other day. You know, you just go out and you never know. Let's go out and just give it give it your own. See where the chips land. You know, and um, and but we got to be prepared, and we are prepared. And um, you know, we we've had a good workout yesterday, and they were like I said, locked in because we need to guard their sets and their bigs. Their bigs are good. They're young, but they're good. And so we can just see how that works out. You know, um, and Tyler and Major and Gio, I have I have full confidence in those guys to to execute the game plan. So then, every team that wins a championship, if you don't have a point guard, you're not winning a championship. Talk about your point well, guard. It, it, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him, to be honest with you. And I think everybody could agree with that on that team, on that floor right now. It's uh, He makes us go. I mean, he just – he's. To me, he's the MVP of the district. To be honest with you, I mean, it's just people got to when people got to plan for you. I mean, uh, you know, you're something special, and he's just so humble too. You know what I mean? He's so humble, and he wants to get better. That's the beauty of, beauty of this whole thing is that he hadn't reached his, reached his max at all. So, right, you know, it's it's going to be fun with him. Exactly, and you know, what we talked about this several games ago, to where when I first saw the kid as a freshman, little bitty guy. High voice, film the games for you and all that good stuff. Yeah. His sophomore year got a little bit bigger, got a little <laughs> bit stronger, but still was a little guy. And then this year he talks like a man, yeah. and he's obviously been in the weight room because he's so strong. Yeah. But he is like an Allen Iverson kind of. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feed my big boys. I'm gonna get them the ball, but. If I have to take you, I'm going to take you myself. Yeah, yeah. he has that dog in him. Yeah. He has the dog in him. And there's some kids that do and some kids that don't. And, you know, I saw that in eighth grade. Um, uh, I, I made – right when I saw him, I said his freshman year he's playing JV. So his sophomore year he can be ready for us. And um, it was – in it because he's put the work in too. So it's 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 a blessing. <laughs> John Gully is a blessing. But also with the Tay Andrews is a blessing too. All those guys are blessings. But Tay Andrews, he's bought into our defensive and he's a – He's our defensive stopper, and um, it's great to have something like that. He doesn't care about scoring, so love it that he's bought into that. Right, mm. exactly. Well, and you know why? I mean, they they started out all young, and they're now like sophomores and juniors and whatnot. Yeah. They're a pretty good ball club, yeah, but are. you guys held your own and put it to them at at, at Lockhart. So, I mean, who's the guy we got to watch out for well, over there? Number though? five is their scorer. He's a shooter. And then you know you got the big kid. The big kid didn't play against us. He's a, he's the kid over there, um, number thirty-five, Cameron. And you um, you have to um, you got to make sure that you, you stay between him and the basket. You know what I mean? You got you got to make him shoot over our length. And then you got Tyson, number fifteen, is a, the other big man. If you if you don't let him get paint touches, we're going to be fine. And that's our goal. It's not let him get in the paint. Right. And um, you know they'd like to work the high low a lot, so we got to plan for that. And um, and. And we just got to execute that plan. The one thing is, and I told Tyler and I told Major, every foul that you get has to be over your shoulders. It can't be down below swiping at stuff. The only time you get a foul like that is when you're diving on the floor. Right, and, you right. Know, so that's, you know, and, um, and see, and, and they, they retain that stuff. So, you see. Right. You know. And that's great work because, uh, you know, 20 years is a long time to not see back. I was looking at it, I was like, God, I was in my 30s back then. Yeah. And, you know, so. The thing is, is that, you know, the guys are excited. I heard them before the game. I know they're ready to play, and I think we're going to have a fantastic basketball game. So as far as is there anybody that you want to give shout-outs to that you work with yeah. or people out listening? Uh, well, my whole family's here. So, I, you know, the Lockhart community, this is for you. You know what I mean? That, I mean, it's it, it was a long time coming, and um, that was my first year coaching when they made the playoffs, you know. So, it, it, this is for you, and I, that, I was so happy for him. I'm getting text messages, and and it is just beautiful thing, you know. Good lucks messages, and and it's beautiful, and it's, it's for them, you know. It's not for me, you know what I mean. It's it's not about me anymore, and it's about these kids and their families, and and, and also the the kids' families that put in the time, and the money to get us better, you know, get themselves better. So, so uh, yeah, it's for them. I appreciate you. Hey, and we're excited. I know we're going to be calling another game, so I'm not going to act like this is going to be the last one. This is going to be moving on down the line. If these guys play the way they played the last few games, I mean, they people better watch out. 11 and 10 doesn't represent no, what you are. Know. Everybody's gotten better. The wife's gotten better, and it's going to be a ball game. All, All right. right. I appreciate you, Scott. Hey, good luck to you, and thank you very much. Appreciate you, buddy. Right. We're going to go ahead and um, – Ouch, as I just hit my knee. 
hopefully you all can hear us. And like I said, our hot spots going in and out. As a matter of fact, right now, I don't know that we're even getting you. Um, why don't you go ahead and ask him if, if he can hear us, whatever, just to, cause I'm not seeing any messages or anything on it. Um, but we're having a lot of trouble here with our hot spot. It bounces in from what it's supposed to be, bounces out. Um, but it was like this the last time I was here. So um, this is kind of where we're at, where it stands right now. And uh, the good thing is, is that you will, you will be able to have us. Um, you will be able to have us because we're recording this. So if you can't hear it now, you will be able to hear it later. But like I said, huh, that's weird. <laughs> okay. I guess what we'll do right now is let's run about through about four or five commercials. Let them hear that. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network fueled by Vipe Live. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving. They, uh, they're in District 17, and earlier, Maynard, Lost to McCallum, and the way Coach was talking before the game, in the event that McCallum makes it to round three and Lockhart makes it to round three, they're going to have to play each other. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're at there. We're about four minutes, 50 seconds away from the tip-off and the starting lineups and probably the national anthem and all that. So real quick, I'm going to let you read the feeders, and then I'm going to take us into the commercial break so uh, Carson can get us going there. So go ahead and hit our folks here. Sounds good. We'd like to thank our sponsors, The Pearl, Rhonda Reagan Realty, Diesel Dogs, Westies, State Farm, and Snap Fitness. All right. Well, that will do that. Now we're going to go straight into our commercial breaks, get a few more commercials, some love, and then we'll come back, and hopefully by then we'll have some things going on where we can get this game started. You're uh, listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. Kpar Design Build LLC is a general contractor who resides and serves Lockhart residents and surrounding communities. Kpar Design Build LLC is a local builder established in 2006 and is insured, bonded, and accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Kpar Design Build LLC provides both residential and commercial new construction, remodeling services, and specializes in kitchen and bath design. Call 512-784-6940 or email kpartdesignbuild at yahoo.com to schedule a consultation with free estimate. Follow them on Facebook at Kpart Design Build and at Kpart Kitchen Bath. Green Group Holdings is a proud sponsor of Lion Country. Green Group is an environmental services company that specializes in the planning, implementation, and operation of waste disposal, recycling, reuse, and restoration projects. These projects are designed with the environment and safety as the highest priorities, with an approach that provides significant value to the communities in which they're located. Currently, Green Group is proposing a development in northern Caldwell County, 130 Environmental Park. This proposed project will be a state-of-the-art, environmentally friendly, mixed-use development. A few
The Lions will go with their usual as Tay Andrews, a junior, Jock Goley, a junior, Miguel Rodriguez, senior, uh, Gio Roque, senior, and Tyler Stevenson, senior, will be starting tonight. On the other side, Massaquoi, Pinson, Mason, Wybru, and Jackson. Oh, we have a technical foul to start the game. Interesting. Jock Goley misses the technical foul on the first shot. So somebody must not have been in the book or somebody dunked before the game. And he makes the second one. So Lockhart will get the ball in a one point lead to start things off here. That's a weird way to start it. It is. So either someone was dunking before the game or someone was not in the scorebook correctly. Tay Andrews will hand it off and here we go. Starting the first time in 20 years, your Lockhart Lions have been in the playoffs. How exciting. Gully. Inside, to, um, Andrews, they find Miguel in the corner. Inside the big boy. Oh, he tried to hit Stevenson, and Stevenson wasn't ready. And then an elbow to Gio Roque in the nose. That's just going to make him really happy. So uh, they just might have woke up a sleeping bear with that one. It'll be Pinson, great point guard, running the show. Hands off to Massaquai. They'll get it over to Jackson up top. Kicks it outside to Massaquai. They will hand it off to their scorer, and that's Mason. Mason will kick it out. Pinson thought about the three, gives it up. Now he shoots the three. He's way off. Roque comes down with a beautiful rebound over both their big men. So one nothing Lions. Jaw goalie from the left side. He's going to drive the lane, puts it up. Misses. Jackson gets the rebound. They're going the other way. They kick it out to Pinson. Pinson kicks it over here to Mason. Mason with a nice crossover. Floats it up, no good. Jackson somehow got away with a foul, misses the layup, and then he scores. So Jackson makes it two to one. Weiss on top, 6.35 to go first quarter. As Kerry said, <laughs> got some big boys inside. This is gonna be a monster game inside. Definitely, I think one of the pluses though is that they're not pressing this, so we're able to get down and set up well. Easily, easily, and they're kind of in that zone. They're gonna force us to shoot it over the top. I know it's mm -hmm. a man, but it's kind of a matchup. That's gonna be his second, team third. Stevenson at the line, the 6'11 senior. And he doesn't follow through on a shot, and he's gonna come up short on that one. Looks like Major New, the 6'9 junior, is getting ready to check in. Wybrew checked out, so they got a little bit shorter with that substitution. Quite a bit shorter. And he drops the second one. So Stevenson, one for two from the line. Four to two, Lions on top. 4.45 to go first quarter. Pinson. Massaquoi up top, over to Mason. Mason drives, kicks it out. Massaquoi is going to float the ball in there. They're going to call a foul. And they're going to call Miguel for his second foul. Three on the Lions. And it looks like Massaquoi will go to the line to shoot two. Diggs checked in for uh, for the Wolves. Massaquoi hits his first one. Four to three is the score right now. Lions on top. Checking in for the Lions is number 20, Jordan Garcia. Superstar running back for the football team. Backup point guard for the Lions basketball team. Second shot's missed. Roque comes down with it. They'll hand it off to Ja Goli. They're playing a 1-3-1 zone right now. Looks like they'll be trapping in the corner, so we got to hit the high post and reverse it quickly. Yep, the one-three-one trap. They're going to get try to get a lot of steals. Major couldn't believe he was so open. Misses the shot. Jackson comes down with it. Massaquoi comes out with it on the right side. In the corner it goes to Diggs. Back to Massaquoi up top. On the right wing now. He'll drive. Shoots the shot, and they're going to call him for the walk. And he does not like the call. Wow. <laughs> I have seen all three of these officials, and we did good. We got our usual who comes to Lockhart under the basket down there. 
So Tay Andrews with the ball. Over to Ja Gouley on the left side. Ball's tipped by Massacoy. Garcia drives and scores. Jordan Garcia off the bench with two points. Very nice. 6-3 Lions, 3.33 to go first quarter. It's big when you have a senior come off the bench and sticks in a basket that he doesn't even usually shoot the basketball. <laughs> Every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K R E U Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we are back here at Weiss High School here in Pflugerville and pretty good first quarter. Um, I'll tell you what, though, we didn't have to play against Jackson the first time, and he is a beast inside. We're just waiting for the two teams to come out. Something that's really working for us is, is Lockhart's typical feistiness. We kind of get un under the, the skin of the other team and just get going, and this is working for us right now. It really is, and I think the one mistake they made early on was when they threw the, the elbow to the nose of Gio Roque because you just woke up the sleeping bear. For sure. He, he was feeling his nose the whole quarter, too, so <laughs> he didn't forget about it. So Mascoy will be throwing it in for the Wolves. He'll give it up to Pinson, and here we go to start the second quarter. The Lions up 10-8, first time in 20 years they've seen the playoffs. Ball is stripped by ja, uh, ja Gulley. Major New gets the steal. Back to Ja Gulley. In the corner to Stevenson, over to Gulley. Now they're in man-to-man. -man. They're just mixing it up on us, trying to make us think a little bit. Gulley and Pinson going head-to-head. -head. Gulley traveled, oh, he got away with the travel. <laughs> but he scores instead. He sure did. Wow, and a technical foul? Oh, they said delay a game. I thought they called a technical foul. Ja Goley took about, I don't know, six, seven steps, ended up scoring. We'll take it. Pinson will walk it up the floor. One, two, I think this is a one, two, two. Nope, it's a two, three. So the zone is where they're gonna stay as the Lions, and this is a pretty good outside shooting team. Mason from the corner from three, and he hits it. He now has six. Both of Roque okay, kicks it out to Ja Goley. Ja Goley's going to drive the lane up and under, and he scores. That was nice. And earlier when I said that Gio was quick, physically he is quick, but I was really meaning mentally, and, and to think of something like that just at the end. And then Major just took an inbounds pass and banks it in off a, a weird angle. The Lions are up three now. The big guys are doing a great job for the Lions tonight. They really are. Pinson drives. He gets fouled. And they're going to call that on Jaw Goalie. That is Jaw's first, team sixth. They'll be in the bonus for the last minute and 20 from here on out. Pinson will go to the line to shoot from the free throw line. He has not scored yet tonight. So we suggested that this might be a good thing for the Lions, but we didn't think about it the other way. We exactly. need to definitely be careful with our fouls. 20 to 18 as he makes the first free throw. Wybrew will sit down. Dyke is going to check in for the Wolves. Free throw is no good. Rebounded by Major New. One fifteen to go. Goalie with the ball. Gives it to Major. Major from the free throw line. Can't get it to go. Mason gets a rebound. A minute five to go first half, 20 to 18, Lions on top. Again, first time in 20 years they've been in the playoffs and they're playing well right now. The team today, Merle Bertrand, our QA, Carson Smith running the produce, production of the, the show here. Carrie Smith color commentating, myself, Scott Smith doing the play-by-play. -play. We're down to 45 seconds. Tay Andrews just about got a steal on Mason. They go inside to Jackson. He walked again and got away with it and he'll score the bucket. He now has eight. 20 to 20 with 34 seconds left. Goalie. Goalie going against Dyke. 
Goalie drives, gets fouled, and that's going to be on Dyke, and he didn't like it. First foul, team six. Both teams will be in the bonus lot that it matters with 22 seconds left. Goalie goes to the line where he got technical fouls early on. I don't know if it was a scorebook thing, which we think it was, or if somebody was dunking before the game or what, but they got technical fouls to start the game. Jaw goalie hit one of two of those. He hits this one, giving us a 21 to 20 lead with 22 seconds left. Jordan Garcia has checked in. Miguel is sitting down now. And he misses the second one, and they're gonna get Roque with his second foul. Oh, check that, that's his first foul, sorry. So they'll get a one on one out of this. The good thing is, is Jackson for them, we're wearing him out, he's tired. Oh, for sure, yeah. He's getting Poor beat thing. up by Gio, he's getting <laughs> beat up by Major, he's getting beat up by Tyler. They're putting him through the ringer. Yes, he's, he's definitely have to work for it today. So it'll be Wybrew, the one guy we don't want to foul at the free throw line to shoot a one on one. And fortunately, I gave him that, that kiss of death because he missed the free throw. 18 seconds left, Garcia with the ball. And they're gonna call Massaquay with the reach away from the basketball. That's wow. his second foul, team seventh. And now Ja Goley, who's usually really good at the free throw lines, two for four today. He'll go to the line for one-on-one. -on -one. And he makes it. You definitely don't want to be foul on jaw very often. 22 to 20. Second free throw, rims off. He didn't keep his feet set and missed it. Mason has it with 10 seconds left. Do not let him shoot a shot late in the half. He's going to drive, and they're going to call a foul. I didn't see who the foul was on, though. Zero, Tay Andrews. That's his first, team eighth. So it will be Mason going to the line to shoot a one on one. He has six points, both off of three pointers. Wybrew will check out. Dig or Dyke will check in. And he'll make the first one. He now has seven. 22-21, 3.6 seconds to go here in the first half. And he makes them both. He now has eight. Tied at 22 and they call a foul on Massaquai. That will be his third foul and he is not at all happy about that. No, that's his third in what, a minute? <laughs> <laughs> He's been fouling a lot and they're gonna go to the bench to bring Diggs in for Massaquai. So going to the line will be Tay Andrews. And he misses. And the rebound is gotten by Diggs. And that is how the first half will end. We started the game at zero to zero. We go to half, 22 to 22. We'll go ahead and take it to a quick commercial break. And when we come back at halftime, we're gonna be talking to Lockhart quarterback, senior Jackie Edwards Jr. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network fueled by Vibe Live. For over 15 years, Rain and Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Rain and Drywall and Paint today. Come on in to Texas Oil Express, where we can change your oil in under 10 minutes. We also do inspection stickers. Be sure to shop Lockhart first and check us out on Facebook. Voted Caldwell County's best oil change in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2013, 2018, and 2019. 
Link Realty proudly supports Lockhart Lions Athletics. For all of your real estate needs, come see Link Realty on the square in Lockhart or visit them online at linkrealtytx.com. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Weiss High School in Pflugerville where the Lions, first time in 20 years, they make the playoffs and they're doing well, 22-22 at the half against the, the Weiss Wolves, who are the number two seed that came out of District 18. Now, I've got a young man with me who I've been watching play basketball since he was a sophomore, at least a sophomore, might have been even his freshman year, but seems like he's been on the varsity forever where he's from, so I'm gonna let him tell you who he is and what school that he plays for, but by God, we've seen him a lot over the years. Who are you? Hey, uh, thanks for having me. I'm Rob Wade and I go to McCallum High School. Um, we played Lockhart my freshman year when I was on the freshman team. And then I've played against them three years in a row since my sophomore year. And I think it's, it's been a pretty even series. I think I'm on varsity, I'm four and two or something. But the last two years we've split. So it's always good playing against Lockhart. And uh, yeah, it's, they got a good team this year. So um, tell, tell us a little bit about what you guys do, because, again, you're one of my favorites in the district. Yes, sir. Now, that's got to be your brother, am I correct, that plays with you? Yeah, number three is my twin brother, John. So uh, now, we look nothing alike, right. but we're twins. It's, okay, so is it like a competition where who can beat up who at home, or do you guys get along? So <laughs> we get along, but, like, it was, it was competition when we were younger, but I kind of, like, separated myself because I got a lot more serious about basketball probably – freshman year of high school and I think John's John gets better grades and he's a little smarter than me so we kind of each have our own little things so that's well fun. I know that during one of the games and it was during one of my sons I want to say it was his junior or senior year we had an altercation and yeah. you and your brother were out there trying to ease yeah. everybody and and then I know you all got together and started talking that is when I thought I like this kid. I like his brother. I like these guys. They're nice people. Sure. But uh, that made that ma that right there said a lot about you and your brother and well, your thanks. family. Thank you. So you know, been a big fan. But I want you to tell everybody about you guys just played Maynard and what happened in that game. Um, so we played Maynard and they were they were favored in the Statesman, which is the Austin newsletter, and a bunch of you know high school account like high school sports accounts on Twitter had Maynard. And we're the two seed, they're the three seed. So everybody was saying Maynard's going to win. And we came in, we had our game plan. Um, we just played really well. It was, you know, both teams were kind of jittery at the, at the start. I think like this game is about the same score at half. And then second half, I think our experience, we have seven seniors on the team. And we were just like, all right, we got this. And we got together. We ended up winning by 17. It was a good controlled win at the end. So how many did you have? I ended up with 15. What, you didn't score 30? No, I did not score 30. How about a dunk? I did have a dunk. There I had an and one dunk. All right, there you go. There you go. That's good. Well, we're hoping that maybe in the third round we might meet each other again yeah. for another big game because usually when the two teams yeah. get together, it's an it's just a it's great huge, basketball yeah. game to watch. Yeah, it'll be the so, tiebreaker. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I, you know, I know you guys have got to get going and doing your thing, but I wanted because you're one of my favorite players in the district that doesn't play in Lockhart. I wanted to get you on here, let yes, you sir. talk a little bit about yourself, and then you know whether or not you and your brother fought at home, because <laughs> we always talk about that on the yeah. air. Who wins the dinner table? <laughs> Who wins when they're shooting baskets? Who wins when they're sitting there picking scores? You know, yeah. we figured it had to be pretty competitive at the house. For so, sure, yeah. But when you get home, tell your parents they do a fantastic job. We love you and your brother, you great people, and sure. glad to have you on board with us tonight. Thank you. All right, well, good All luck right. to you. Thank good you. Good luck to you all, too. Thank you. All right, so we're going to switch gears. Again, this young man had, had, had played against Lockhart for so many years. He's been a pain in our side for a very long time. Glad to get him on here. Now, we're going to go ahead and talk to our superstar. So let him get the headset on here pretty quick. 
All right, so what I remember of this kid, I've been calling sports at Lockhart for five years. He was a sophomore, and our quarterback, who we kind of were living and dying with that year, got hurt. This guy took over as a sophomore, and I thought, oh, good God, is this sophomore going to be able to handle this pressure? Came in, knocked it out of the park the entire season, and has been starting ever since. So we're here with Jackie Edwards Jr., which I'm glad he's a senior now because it was hard to say Jackie Edwards Jr., the junior, when he was a junior. So that just kinda, it was kind of a, a pain. So I'm glad he's a senior this year. So Jackie, you had a, a rough year with injuries in football, but that because of what you did prior to this year, it got you a scholarship somewhere. Where are you heading to play football next year? I'm heading my talents to go play at Texas Western University in Fort Worth. That's what I figured, but I wanted you to break the news to everybody. And, Jackie, the thing is, what people probably don't know about you unless they go to all the games, you were a starting quarterback and one of the mainstays. As a matter of fact, you were the preseason offensive player of the year voted by all the coaches yes, sir. for our football district. Okay, well, yeah, he's a good football player, but then he's a good basketball player. He can drop threes. He played great defense, just a heck of an athlete there. But – you could have probably gone somewhere playing baseball. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Are you playing this year? Yes, sir. Okay. I didn't know if you were going to say, okay, I got my scholarship. Now I'm done. I'm just going to focus on football or if you were going to go ahead and play baseball. Yes, sir. I'm playing baseball. Very good. So will you be in the outfield again this year? Yes, sir. Outfield. And hopefully they'll let me pitch some. There you go. There you go. Well, and you know, I was talking to the folks down here that are once with the Statesman and the other one's like uh, Alamo Sports or whatever for hoops. Yes, sir. And they looked at Gio Roki and thought, oh, he has to be some kind of a football star. Yeah. And I said, he don't even play football. Yes, sir. You know, kind of thing. So for you, when you go to play college football, are they looking at you as a quarterback, a defensive guy? What are they looking at? Uh, yes, sir. They're looking at me as a quarterback. Very good. So as far as your football career, what was probably the biggest highlight in your, your, or your football career? Uh, I feel like the biggest highlight of my football career as a locker Lion was really just getting my first start against Medina Valley my sophomore year. I remember you talking to me before that game, too. <laughs> well, you know, I was it was just one of those things you knew that if anything happened, you'd be stepping in. And I was real worried about a sophomore coming in. I, I just want you to know, I think what you did your sophomore, junior, senior year, even your senior year with the injuries, was phenomenal. I mean, above, thank you, thank you. we're talking about the kind of numbers that like Daquan Ellison would put up. You were doing that as a runner and a thrower, and then just keeping the, the team under under keel. You kept them at ease. You didn't let them get all wound up and stuff. And I, I tell you what, I'm going to miss calling your games. It was a pleasure thank watching you, you thank play. You. Anybody you want to give a shout out to tonight? I uh, just shout out to all the fans and my parents and God, because without them, Lockhart wouldn't be here today in this playoff game. I know we wanted to make the community proud, so yes, sir. Well, I'm glad you're here, and I'm going to get back to calling the game. Thank you very much, sir. Hey, Good luck you. to you in college. Thank you. Super proud of you, Jackie. Really proud of you. All right, so that was Jackie Edwards Jr., and this year he's the senior. So real quickly, I'm going to let Carrie talk about her highlights and get people caught up to speed here. Not my highlights, just the highlights of the game. Just in case you were in and out with our uh, Wi-Fi issues, we just wanted to, you know, kind of go back a little bit. Like Scott said, we're starting over for the second half, 22-22. It's been a, an active game, right? Um, I think both sides are pretty feisty, which goes well with our alliance because we are very feisty. So if we can feed off of that from another team, we will. Um, and that's what we've been doing. So it's really gone back and forth and starting the second half 22 to 22 is a great thing for us okay so we're back the only difference in the starting lineups is it looks like Diggs is going to start for Massaquoi who had three fouls in the first half everybody else is starting the second half that started the first half Roque will throw it into Miguel Miguel will hand it off to Bully, and here we go, starting the third quarter, tied at 22. Miguel hasn't even shot the ball tonight. Roque with the hook shot, and he scores. That's the way to start the second half. Roque now with eight. Just giving you a heads up, it costs some pretty good money to put video on the games like this. This is why this game is audio only, just like a radio broadcast. And uh, 
you're, we're, you're listening to a very good game. Mason with the ball going up against the man-to-man of Lockhart. I'm kind of surprised they're in it. Nope, they've been gone back to his zone. They did a good job, as does Miguel, to keep uh, Diggs out of the lane. Mason going to go up against Tay. They double-team him. Maybrew from the three-point line misses. Jackson somehow gets a foul, doesn't get called on him. Diggs misses the shot. Stevenson gets the rebound. Ja Gulley with it on the right side. Spin move, fade away, and he hits it. And he hits it with three people on him. Yes, he did, and he's half their size. Nine points. Lions are up 26-22 with 6.42 to go, third quarter. First time in the state playoffs in 20 years. I was still skinny back when they went to the playoffs the last mm -hmm. time. Diggs to Pinson. Now they're against that 2-3 zone. Nope, they're actually man-to-man. -man. They're disguising it well. Pinson into Maybrew. Maybrew scores the layup. He now has four. 26-24, Gully will walk it up. In the first half, Mascoy had three, Pinson one, Mason eight, Wybrew two, and Jackson eight. For the Wolves, Stevenson tries to throw it in a Roque, and Maybrew gets the steal. Hands it off to Pinson. Diggs. Now they'll give it to Mason. Mason against Andrews. He'll float it, no good. Jackson, easy rebound, easy layup. He'll score his 10th point. Stevenson will pick up his third foul. That is costly early on. Oh, actually they called that on Tay Andrews, I think. They did call that on Andrews. And he'll score it. So how many is that for Tay? Tay has two, Stevenson has two. And he hit the free throw, so that will put them up 27, 26. Goalie with the ball, driving the lane, lays it up and scores. Goalie with 11, 28, 27 Lions. Pinson with the ball. We may, we may not get this all done in four quarters. Pinson up top. Honestly, you can't ask for much more out of a playoff game. Well, this is a really nice game to watch. They'll get it over to Mason in the corner. No good. Goalie comes down with it. Major News getting ready to check in at the next dead ball. Goalie on the right side. From way downtown, no good. Stevenson Jackson fighting for the ball. Jackson the last to touch it. Stevenson will get it. <coughs> Major New will check in and I believe they're gonna take Miguel out. Massaquay will check in with three fouls and Diggs will check out. 28-27, your lines are on top with the ball. Tay Andrews from the corner, way short on the three-pointer. Jackson gets the rebound, kicks it out to Pinson and here he goes the other way. The speed is picked up in this game a little bit. Three-pointer by Mason is good in the corner. Timeout is called by the Lions. You're right. and, and Having the speed faster right now is kind of going to get us because what was benefiting us is holding that ball over there on the offensive side. Even if we didn't score, we're at least taking that time away from it. Well, and, you know, with 444 to go here in the third quarter, we're going to leave it here to catch up on the first half scoring for the Lions. 30-28, to 28, Mason has hit three three-pointers. He now has 11 points. For the Lions at half, it was uh, goalie with seven, Garcia with two, Major New with six, Roque with six, and Stevenson with one. But in this quarter, Goalie has hit two buckets, so he now has 11, and Roque has eight. On the flip side, Mason has 11, and Wybrew has four, and 11 for Jackson. So 4.44 to go here in the third quarter. Major news on the floor with uh, Miguel, and Tay Andrews, Ja Goalie, and Gio Roque. Roque throws it in the Goalie. <coughs> They get the ball in the corner to Miguel. Roque going to drive the lane. Puts it up, gets blocked by Jackson. And here they go the other way is Mason. 
and a three-pointer by Mason, and now things are starting to get a little ugly here. The Lions are going to have to keep an eye on him, and they're going to call a travel on Goalie. Goalie does not like the call. 33 to 28, 413 to go, third quarter. The wheels have kind of fallen off here. The Lions need to pick it up. We definitely have a bigger crowd than Weiss does as they're all sitting right behind us. Ball goes out of bounds off Pinson. Oh, they said it went out of bounds on Miguel. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure how they saw that. He was on the floor. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Pinson will throw it in with just under four minutes. Throws it in cross court to Massacoy. He's gonna drive on Miguel. Pulls up, shoots a jumper, and he scores. He now has five. 35-28, the Lions are in a shooting slump here. And the Wolves have gotten hot. Nothing to panic about. No, the big ticket is to stay calm. Goalie has it on the right side. Drive, he gets tripped, and they're not gonna call anything. Pinson comes up with it, and he misses the layup. Major news there for the rebound, and here come the Lions. Tay Andrews, I think the Lions need to slow it down. They're trying to get in a foot race with a team that wants to be in a foot race. Slow it down, pound it inside, and make them work on you. Roque to goalie. He's wanting a screen, does goalie. He's gonna get double teamed. There's a foul on Mason. Oh wow, they called five seconds. There is no way that was not a foul. And was he not moving? Yeah, you can't have a five seconds when you're moving alongside him, but the fact that he was bodying him up the whole way, a timeout is called. We're gonna go ahead and take a real quick break. Why don't you go ahead and read the, the people that don't have commercials. All right, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Westies, State Farm, Diesel Dogs, Snap Fitness, The Pearl, and Rhonda Reagan Realty. All right, having to get caught up with some drinking of fluids here. So, the score was tied 22 to 22 at the half. Right now it is 13 to six in favor of Weiss here in the third quarter. The Lions are gonna have to get some stops, but more importantly, they've gotta go back inside and go where they got their buckets early on. It's not that they're shooting a bunch of three pointers, but they're not looking inside right now. Wybrew will throw it in for the Wolves. Hands it off to Pinson. 2.50 to go, third quarter. The Wolves have the ball in the lead. Mason up top to Massacoy. Back to Mason. Three pointers on the way, and he buries it. He has hit three three pointers in this quarter alone, five for the game. He has 17 points, and the Lions are down 10. Miguel gives it to Garcia. Back to Goli. Goli drives, kicks it over to Tay. Tay's gonna drive, puts it up, no good. And Jackson with the rebound, throws it long to Massacoy. He'll lay it up and miss the layup. Jordan Garcia gets it. And I think the Lions have just got to slow down. Yes. They're trying to play too fast. It's kind of what we said at the beginning of the game, though, that their little guys are quick, so they're ready to run. Roque to Jordan Garcia. A minute 48 to go, the Lions down 10. They're back in a 2-3 zone, but they are trapping out of this 2-3 zone. And they're gonna finally call the foul that should have been called earlier on Mason. His second, team first. Each team with one foul. Silvestre will check in for Garcia. Stevenson for Roque. Andrews will throw it into the goalie. Andrews up to New. New to Silvestre. Into Stevenson. 
and Stevenson throws it away, and Mason comes out with a steal. He'll hand it off to Pinson. We have a minute 20 to go, third quarter, 38-28. Nothing really rolling the way of the Lions here in the second half. Mason thought about the three, he's gonna drive the lane, throws up the floater, and it's no good. Rebounded by Jackson, and he's gonna get, no, he's gonna walk. I can't wait to see that kid when he turns into a junior or a senior. Good gosh, he's big. <laughs> We're right at a minute to go here in the third quarter. Lions down 10, but they have the ball. Going to Silvestre, inside to Stevenson. Out to Silvestre. He throws it inside to New. New will kick it out. Silvestre to New, the hook shot, no good. And Stevenson will get called for the foul. That is his third. Team second. I don't, I don't think so. Oh, wow, really? Mm -mm. They called that on Pinson? Yep. First foul on Pinson, team second. So that is the second time I thought Tyler fouled and he didn't get called for it. New with it at the top of the key over to Silvestre. 40 seconds to go, third quarter, down 10. Goalie on the right wing. He'll bring it back out to reset the lineup. They'll give it to Silvestre. Silvestre inside to New. New's gonna go up, gets blocked by Jackson. Here comes Mason the other way. Pinson from three. He misses. And it's rebounded by, oh, Major diving for it. Then it's stolen by Massaquai. Inside to Jackson. He gets fouled and misses the layup. This time, Stevenson got the foul. So it'll be Jackson going to the line where he's one for one today. Thirty-eight twenty-eight. It has been sixteen to six in favor of the Wolves here in the third quarter, and he misses the free throw. Coach Torres over there getting a little worked up. Yeah, I saw Mac trying to pull him back. Mm -hmm. And his second free throw falls in. An 11 point lead. 39 28 with eight seconds left. Wybrew will, no, check that. Jackson will check out. Diggs will check in, as does Dyke. Massacoy gets out as well. Goalie has the ball with six seconds left. Goalie drives, shoots, and scores right at the buzzer. So just like that, John Goalie dry, drops them within nine, and that's exactly what they needed to finish the quarter. So after three quarters of play, it's the Weiss uh, Wolves 39, your Lockhart Lions 30. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. For over 15 years, Raina Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Raina Drywall and Paint today. All right, we are back, and I'm just trying to make sure I got all my scores right, which we do. So it looks like Massacoy now has five Pinson one, 17 for Mason, five of those on three pointers, four points for Wybrew, and 12 for Jackson, the big man inside. On the other side, it is uh, Ja Gulley with 13, two for Jordan Garcia, six for Major New, eight for Gio Roque, and one for Tyler Stevenson. And that is that for them. And. Trying to make sure I get all the points totaled up. As we are getting ready to start the fourth and final quarter here. And, and this is definitely not the end all. They just need to go in there, focus like they can. We know they can. This is nothing compared to some of the, the comebacks that they've had this Exa year. Exactly. I mean, we've seen the, both the boys and girls come from way behind Absolutely. to win basketball games. They just need to calm down, keep their wits about them. And stop that gentleman right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> So Mason throws it into Pinson, and here we go. 
as the Wolves want to run, run, get the score moving. They want to play the game fast. Pinson goes down, and they're going to stop the game as Pinson went down. Our fans aren't happy that they're basically getting a mini timeout here because somebody slipped, which is not a normal thing. They didn't even come clean the floor. No, they didn't. Pinson will throw it into Mason. Mason's going to drive. Gets the shot up. No good. Rebound by Tay Andrews. And that's what we need. We need them to miss shots, and we need to finish at the other end. And that, that missed shot was thanks to Gio Roque, for sure. That big hand in your face will keep you from shooting it. Good rotation by Roque. They're double teaming goalie. Goalie throws it away. Pinson with the steal, lays it up, scores, and somehow they call a foul on goalie. He did not even touch him. Wow. He was ready. To, I think he swallowed his whistle. Man. So Ja Goalie will pick up his second foul. That's a team third. <laughs> and he'll make the free throw. Now they got one of the mama bears mad up there. They better watch out. 42 to 30. Now what's going on? I have no idea. Oh. Oh, he's talking to the two guards. We're having a meeting about how to behave. Yes, Pinson and Goalie. Because we can't talk in basketball? Well, these two guys are notorious stuff talkers. So this is not surprising at all. <laughs> You know, and you said at the beginning of the game that the, the referees seemed like they were letting them play. They need to let them play. Let them talk a little bit. So goalie will have it against Massaquai. Shot is thrown up, no good. And here comes Pence in the other way. The Lions have got to get something answered real quick. They don't want to be falling any further behind. Pence in from three, and he hits it, and that is not what we needed. No. 45 to 30, it's now a 15 point game. The Lions have only scored eight points in the second half. They're taking goalie out of the game and forcing us to go inside and honestly, that's what we should be doing. Goalie will shoot and score and a timeout is called. You're right and, and we know we can score inside. Those games that we focused on the inside, those are the ones that we did really, really well on. Not taking jaw out of it, but just focusing on what we've got. So it looks like Goalie and Pinson are getting into it again. It didn't look like them talking to him at all did anything. As the referees are talking. This could get They're, in. I think they called a technical. Oh, did they? So. I don't know if it's a double technical, which it should be, or if it is just one of the guys got in trouble. And I'm not sure, but their fans are clapping. So timeout is taken. We're going to keep it here because we want to see the excitement of what we could be watching here. I'm going to go ahead and go through our team again. I want to thank Merle Bertrand, our QA, kind of the big dog behind everything at Vibe Sports. Appreciate him being the QA tonight. I'm sure he's got better things that he could be doing, but he's taking time out of his day to be here for this playoff game. Carson Smith back from football. She's uh, come out of retirement. I think she knew her little sister Hudson was doing a pretty good job, wanted to show her up. And we have Carrie Smith, who used to be the producer and is now just the color commentary person. And then myself, Scott Smith, doing play-by-play. -play. And yes, there's a lot of Smiths running around here. And we're not related. And we're not related. She's not my sister. Even though I call Carson my daughter, she's really not my daughter. Um, looks like Mason is going to the line for technical fouls. It'll be interesting to see, though, if it goes both ways. If that's the case, then whoever had the next jump ball will get the ball, but I have a feeling it was just on the Lions. He'll make both free throws, and it was it was just on uh, Ja Goalie. So that's Goalie's third foul, team four. They'll get the ball with a 47-32 lead. 
Massacoy going up against uh, Miguel, blows right by him. In the corner to my Wybrew. Wybrew pulls up, gets fouled by Stevenson. That is his fourth foul of the game. Five fouls on the Lions, two on the Wolves. Wybrew goes to the line. And he makes the first one. He now has five. In high school boys basketball, though, you can't just score uh, 10 points and a half and expect to win. Six points now for Wybrew. 49-32, 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter here. Lions trying to move on to round number two, but they're going to have to make up a lot of ground. They're back to a zone defense or a matchup zone defense. Goalie to Andrews. Roque from three. And Roque buries it. He now has 11. 49-35, Lions down 14. Massacoy is going to drive, and they're going to call a travel. Stevenson with a great job of stopping him going to the basket, and he did that with four fouls. And this is right now the way things stand. This could be his last game. He's going all out. You can expect everything out of Tyler. Roque on the wing. Dr drives, the ball's loose. Tay Andrews picks it up, lays it up, misses. Jackson gets the rebound, and here they go the other way. Mason with the ball on the left wing. Maybrew to Pinson. Pinson's going to drive. That should have been a charge, possibly. Nothing. Jackson gets the rebound, sticks it up, and scores. And now he's talking. 14 points for him. 51-35, 16-point game. Major News going to check in at the next dead ball. Goalie. Good job by Tay Andrews to use his court awareness to know the ball was tipped by them. He just blocked the ball and let it go out of bounds and we'll get it back. Fifty-one thirty-five, five oh six to go, fourth quarter. Andrews with on the left wing over to goalie to Miguel. Out to goalie. Miguel's got to start looking for a shot. They get it in the major. Major shoots and scores. And like I've been saying <laughs> for the last three years, you got to go inside when you got the height. 51 to 37. Baskets almost at will when we go inside. They'll kick it out. Massaquay over to Pinson. In the baseline to Jackson, and he steps in and scores. He now has 16. 53-37, 4.20 to go. Goalie goes the other way and scores. He now has 17. 53-39, 4.10 to go in the fourth quarter. They'll hand it off to Masakoy. I would think at this point in time, they're gonna start running some clock. You would think anyways. They shoot a real quick jumper, it's no good, but nobody blocks out and he gets an easy layup. As Wybrew was right there, he now has eight. Nobody blocking out on that series. And with 3.55 to go in the ball game, it's 55-39. We're gonna take a real quick break. You're watching or listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. Central Texas Refuse LLC is a highly respected full-service waste collection and recycling company serving Central Texas and the surrounding areas. CTR has proudly been servicing the cities of Round Rock, Cedar Park, and Lockhart for decades. CTR is one of the largest independent waste collection service companies in Central Texas. Founded in 1981, CTR has grown through organic expansion and currently operates from four primary locations in Southeast Austin, Round Rock, Lockhart, and from Wilco, a comprehensive single stream recycling facility in Williamson County. CTR is honored to be a sponsor of Lockhart High School Boys and Girls Sports. Go Lions! All right, we're back here for the last three minutes and 50 seconds left. Lions are down 16. Miguel from three, way off the mark. And it's Mason with the rebound. So 3.40 to go. 
the Wolves have the ball in the lead with a 16 point lead. This was a tight game in the first half and all of a sudden the speed is picked up. They're gonna call a foul on Tay Andrews. That's gonna be his third, team sixth. But the first half, 22-22, both teams going back and forth, but it was a really slow paced game. And the Wolves have turned up the heat and the pace. And the Lions just, they needed to slow it down. That needed to slow it down. Now mm -hmm. they're kind of in a, having to pick it up to just catch up. I think they're just feeling frazzled now. Yep. Mason drives the line, shoots, misses, and they're gonna call a foul on Miguel. Oh my goodness. Or no, they didn't. They called it actually on Major New, I believe. Nope, it was Miguel. So that's the third foul on Miguel, team seventh. They're in one on one rest of the way from here on out. The one guy we don't want to foul is at the free throw line. And he makes it. He is now five for five from the free throw line to go with his 20 points he has scored. Most of those are off three pointers. He makes them both. 57-39, an 18 point lead for the Wolves. Goalie picks it up at half court. I'm really surprised they let him do that. Goalie misses the shot and he put it up right handed but they're gonna call a foul. Let's see, the foul was on Massacoy. That's his fourth, team third. Goalie goes to the line to shoot. 17 points, make it 18. At the end of the game, we'll have your offensive and defensive players of the game. New checks out. Garcia has checked in. Silvestre is getting ready to check in. And he makes both free throws. He now has 19 points. Chuck Nash is the offensive player of the game sponsor and Johnny and Sons, your defensive player of the game sponsor. Full court pressure by the Lions. They get it up to Massaquai. He throws it in the corner to, Mab or to Jackson. Massaquai drives the lane, gets fouled, but who was it on? I think they're gonna call it on Gio, huh? And it is Gio. That is his second, team eighth. And Massaquoi will go to the line where he has five points tonight. Miguel and Tay are about ready to check back in here. And he misses the free throw. So he is now one for five at the line. This may be the guy to foul from here on out if we need to foul somebody. I'd almost foul the big boy, the 30, number 35, just a sophomore because putting him in that pressure. He gets the every bit of the rim to get that one in. He now has six points. 58-41, 17 point lead, 250 to go. Garcia kicks it over to Andrews who turns it over. Here comes Mason. Mason's gonna bring it out to run some clock. Pinson's gonna drive now. And now he'll bring it out for some clock time. Now we're getting to the point where we may have to start doing some fouling and Tyler can't be one of them fouling. That's the guy you wanna foul. No, I'm thinking that's why they took Jaw out. And they're gonna call a foul on Gio Roque. Jackson has literally been crawling all over the backs of the defender of our players, and they call the foul on Gio Roque. That's his third, team ninth. Nine to three in fouls. Not that that's been the difference in the game, but it sure isn't helping things at all. Jackson will go to the line to shoot two. He has 16 points. He's two for three from the line. And he makes that one. He makes them both. 60 to 41. 
19 point lead. Garcia with it. We gotta start hitting it inside and going to basket. Andrews to Garcia. Garcia loses the ball and here they come. Mason with it now. Under two minutes to go. Just running some time. Miguel's gonna get called for the foul. That is his fourth. Team 10th are shooting two free throws the rest of the way. Ja Gully will be checking back in at the next chance. And Dyke will go to the line to shoot free throws. And if you look at my scores card, the fourth quarter is all free throws. And he hits the first one. That's his first point of the game. Stevenson will get the rebound off the second one with a miss. Minute 45 to go, 20 point lead. It had taken them 20 years to get to the playoffs and they got there this year, but it looks like we're gonna be falling a little bit short to get to the second round. Go, or Roque from three, no good. Wybrew with the rebound, kicks it out to Pinson. And a good job inside as the Lions fighting for it. Can't, comes back out to Pinson into Wybrew, tries to dunk it and Stevenson blocks him. He was going for the dunk and Stevenson says no. Goalie at the other end gets the basket and they're gonna call a foul. And that's gonna be on Massaquay, I believe. Yeah. Is... Nope, that's Dyke. So goalie will, hmm. Gio Roque is gonna check out. He's gonna give the seniors a, their last curtain call. Roque and Stevenson will check out of the game. The end of the game is going to be uh, Dickens and New. Goalie scores it. Gets the old fashioned three point play. 61-44, one minute to go in the ball game. Pinson gets around. Massaquay, Mason. 50 seconds left. Massaquay drives, kicks it in, but he walked. 48 seconds left. Bronson Alvarez will check in. Major New will check out. Also on the floor is Sean Schexnader. Forty-five seconds left. Goalie from way downtown misses. It was Maybrew with the rebound. Pinson's just going to walk it up the court. So the Lions will uh, drop to eleven and eleven overall this year, but they did make the playoffs for the first time in twenty years. And they're going to call a foul on Jaw Goalie. That's his fourth. Maybe his fifth, the way he's acting. Nope, it's his fourth. Mason is at the line. And he makes the first one. And he misses that one. Cars, uh, Garcia was looking for the pass for Tay Anders, threw it away as Maybrew back came up with it. 62-44, 17 seconds left. Shelton will throw it in. Garcia. They're just kicking it around, ball stolen. And Massaquay will run the clock down. And that'll do it. 62 to 44 is the final score here in the boys contest. We're gonna take some commercials. 
And when we come back, we'll have your offensive and defensive players of the game. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network, fueled by Vibe Live. The Pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. First Lockhart National Bank has been meeting the needs of Caldwell County since 1889. We now serve Travis County with a branch on Slaughter Lane and Hayes County with a branch in Kyle, plus a brand new location in San Marcos. As a member of each of the communities we serve, our relationship bankers, tellers, loan officers, and managers are committed to achieving the financial goals of every customer, one interaction at a time. So whether you're dreaming of a new house, buying a boat, or sending your children off to college, First Lockhart National Bank will be there every step of the way with financial services and guidance you can trust. Parenting is full of surprises. You never know what to expect. So after our son was born, I called my Texas Farm Bureau insurance agent to set up a life insurance policy in case something happened to me. Sawyer is now two. And we'll soon have a sister. There's no one else I would trust with protecting my family. Coverage and discounts are subject to qualifications and policy terms and may vary by situation. All right, we are back here at Weiss High School where the final score is 62 to 44 in favor of the Weiss Wolves. I want to go through the Weiss, Weiss scoring real quick. Uh, Pinson, or I'm sorry, Massacoy had six, Pinson seven, Dyke one, Mason 22, Wybrew eight, Jackson 18, and that's their 62 points. On the other side of the coin, it was uh, Ja Goley with 22, Jordan Garcia with two, Major New with eight, Gio Roque 11, Tyler Stevenson with one, and that's the scoring for the 44. It was 22-22 at half, the boys scored 22 points in the second half for an even 44, but it was uh, the speed of the game in the second half that changed pace, and that's what the difference was, was uh, the speed of the game as they were actually able to get things going and kind of ran away from us a little bit. So going through the uh, players of the game real quick, defensively we'll start out with the Johnny and Sons defensive players of the game. First of all, you gotta, you got to give Tay Andrews Jr. one of the defensive players of the game. He just all over there to guards. He just played a great game defensively, had some big steals, covered some big players, and, and did a great job. Also a junior defensive player of the game is post player at 6'9", Major New, as he got a lot of rebounds, played super defense, had a bunch of assists tonight, and he also dropped in eight points to go with uh, those, uh, those honors. Tyler Stevenson, big country, also defensive player of the game. A block shot on an attempted dunk, and he said, not in my house. It was a great play to end on. <laughs> it was. Absolutely. It was. It was fantastic. But that's Tyler Stevenson, one of the best defensive players in the district, and uh, did a phenomenal job. He only had one point in his last game as a, a senior, but what he did on the defensive end was huge. So Tay Andrews, Jr., Major New, Jr., and Tyler Stevenson, Sr., those are your Johnny and Sons defensive players of the game. On the other side, early on, it was Gio Roque, the senior. Got elbowed in the nose, and I was like, oh, that's the wrong thing to do. And, and that's exactly what happened. He came out and he started firing from that point on. Ended up with 11 points tonight. Hit a big three-pointer in the fourth quarter. So Gio Roque, senior, will be one of your uh, Chuck Nash's offensive players of the game. And then the man who's pretty much ran the show all year for the team. He's been the backbone, the, the leading scorer, and the true leader as a point guard. Uh, junior Ja Goley dropped 22 points tonight. He and Gio will be your Chuck, Chuck Nash offensive players of the game. Great season for the Lions, 11-11 overall. They took third in district play. Um, did a fantastic job and, and uh, you know, went up against a really tough number two seed from the 18 District 18 and uh, just kind of wheels kind of fell off in the second half. But um, 
Great season for them. Coach got them to the playoffs for the first time in 20 years. They have a lot to be a proud of and can build sure. from there. For sure. So, Carrie, what was your thoughts on today? My thoughts, you know, they, they're leaving and feeling heartbroken, but they've come a long way. They did really well. Um, they had the fight in them. Uh, they just kind of lost that kind of at the end of the third quarter and just couldn't get going again. Um, I, think it's, I think it's a lesson in, in staying intact, right? I think next year our returners are going are gonna to have this under their belts. They're going to have some experience in this. They're going to know it's just a little different vibe than, you know, your typical, even in district, your rivalries. They, it just feels different. There's a, a different air about it. So they're going to have this under their belts. Maybe next year they'll come back and be able to stay a little more composed. I think we just kind of got nervous and let it go just a little bit too far. Um, but definitely nothing to be heartbroken about. They're amazing kids. Uh, it's sad to see some of the seniors go. It's sad when you see big boys cry. And so <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it kind of gets you. So, But the, I, I think they did an awesome job. Well, you know, it's it's been a crazy year anyways. And when you put all that together with the fact that it used to just, you know, kind of be me and Brandon doing the football and Carson as our sidekick there producing. And then all the COVID and the shutting down of things and everything else kind of brought you into the picture so that you could get in, see your daughter play ball and things of that nature. And, hey, shh, don't tell her. And uh, we don't need to know. But, uh, but no, we've literally gone through the Smith clan here. We had Carson start out with football. Then Carrie jumped in to do part of the basketball. And then Hudson decided, hey, I want to give that a shot. And she did a really good job, except for the one time she blew her eardrums out on the commercial. <laughs> Other than that, she did a great <laughs> job. Uh, and then, you know, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun and it was a great basketball season. Both teams have junior classes that are going to be very, very solid. Definitely. And uh, I think both teams will be fighting for the playoffs again, boys and girls. Uh, that'll pretty much do it for us, but I do want to give our shout outs to our team one more time. So Merle Bertrand, I appreciate you being the QA. I mean, this is one of the big dogs of Vipe live and he was, Gracious enough to be the QA for today's playoff game. As always, Carson Smith uh, doing the production, Carrie Smith color commentating, Hudson Smith being the bodyguard tonight, and uh, myself, Scott Smith, doing the play-by-play. -play. We appreciate you listening in today. Lions fall a little bit short again, the final score, 62 to 44, but they did make the playoffs for the first time in 20 years. Hats off to all of them. Uh, gonna miss the seniors. Been a good run, and we will talk to you soon. So uh, <laughs> you all have a great night and thank you for listening. Good night. <laughs>